Um, so may I simply ask um, how can the inclusion of set, set aside areas of particular environmental interest adequately mitigate the environmental impacts of deep sea mining? Can I ask Mr Lodge that first? I mean, do they work uh, and do we know enough about them? Is it particular environmental in, uh, areas of particular environmental interest set aside? Yes. Um, well, I'm not a scientist, so perhaps uh, that Professor Henderson might have a view on this, but uh, all I can say is that those areas uh, which so far have been set aside in the Pacific Ocean, in the clarion clipperton zone, uh, were recommended on the basis of uh, global scientific advice, uh, best available scientific advice through a very exhaustive process. Their representative, uh, the, the, or they together constitute a representative network uh, that is uh, aimed at protecting the biodiversity uh, of the entire uh, bioregion, as advised by scientists. Uh, and uh, they actually slightly exceed the 30% target that the previous panel was talking about for that particular bioregion. Now, that plan is a long-term plan. Of course, it needs to be reviewed from time to time. It's up for review uh, right now, in fact, and uh, we'll, we'll go through a review process. So we'll hear from uh, the global scientific community uh, as to how well it's working and uh, how it's maturing in terms of the new data that is being generated from the scientific research cruisers by UK and by other contractors. We're adding to the data all the time, so we're learning more and more. So how are those areas designated? Oh, it sounds like the, the definitions are changing and we're still in. They, they, they were designated through uh, a fairly exhaustive scientific process uh, involving uh, m many scientists from around the world, a number of international workshops sponsored by the International Seabed Authority, uh, and uh, on the basis of then of a discussion through the organs of the authority, we have a legal and technical commission, for example, that reviews so, these proposals and evaluates them. Yeah, but can I ask Professor Henderson then, perhaps, uh, because we were told in a previous evidence session by Professor Mills of Southampton University that there's no knowledge on the impact of the areas of particular environment interest, uh, no knowledge of what the impact w will be. So well, how would you respond to that? Because Mr Lodge seems to say, it seems to be implying there's this huge amount of scientific knowledge that's, that's um, available that we know about, and yet Professor Mills said we don't seem to know much about it. And what was your understanding? Um, I'm, th I'm trying to interpret what Professor Mills said, but um, my... But my what, he, what he says here is that there is no knowledge on the impact that areas of particular environmental interest will have. Well, I would, I mean, I think that the, the general issue, if we, if we, again, I'll focus my remarks on the polymetallic nodules, which yeah. are, um, which we've spent most of our time talking about. Um, and, and there are quite there are large set aside areas. If you think of that as an analog, if you think of the, of the land surface as an analog, you would know if you did if you were to destroy a bunch of forest when you plant when you made a mine, mm -hmm. you we would have a pretty good idea of what it would do to forest 100 kilometres away. We would be, be able to assess that. I think at the moment what we know about the deep sea is much less than that. So we um, what we know less well is if we mine in one place, will it have a far field effect on the other site? And um, is the other site genetically and in an ecosystem terms identical? Again, we'd know that for the forest. We could go and measure it more easily. So there is a level of ignorance about what we find on the seafloor, about how, how different the different patches are and how much mining activity in one area would impact a, f a far field site. So in that respect, I think that's probably what um, Professor Mills was referring to. Um, the way to address that ignorance is to start to look at these areas, and I would support what's been said here before, is that the, the exploration is enabling us to do that extensively in the areas where people are thinking about recovery. Um, there's very much less research, from my understanding, in areas which are set aside. So I think that's probably I, I, I will be asking that now in a moment, Mr Williams, but can I finally ask Professor Henderson, other than setting aside areas, how can the environmental impacts from the exploitation of deep sea minerals best be mitigated? 
I mean, obviously, the, what you've already been talking about is that obviously there's an issue about the environmental impact in the immediate vicinity. Then there's the wider regional issue in setting aside. Mm -hmm. uh, but is there anything else you'd add? I, I am interested, obviously, from Mr. Williams, whether he's more interested in, in as it were, the, the localised area rather than having enormous amount of money spent from a point of view of a company. I think uh, region, my perception is that that, mi that mining of a particular area for polymetallic nodules will really do substantial damage to, the, to that local environment on the seabed. Mm. Um, and that's pretty much unavoidable in the recovery of the nodules. Um, I think um, where, uh, there, where there's a potential for real limitation of damage is in, how, is in the far field effects. So whatever mining activity is pursued, if it, if it generates a lot of plume material from the seabed activity or during transport of material to the surface and decanting at the surface, that um, if there's basically a mess made in that process, that has the potential for far field effects, which is probably possible to mitigate against in a way that the actual interruption of the, uh, it, um, intervention of the seafloor is not, not possible. So if you've got a five percent, thirty percent or whatever it is set aside, something on the edge of that thirty percent, which is sort of billowing out enormous amounts of marine pollution that's then been uh, through tide and wave, act, well, wave activity just sort of sweeping in. It, it seems a bit sort of, sort of ridiculous because that 30% isn't then protected. So does that imply that if you have a 30% designated, really, in real sense, you've got to have then a, a buffer zone between the 30% mm. and where you should be allowed to exploit to avoid that movement? Well, I would say, I mean, I think that, that when well, you're talking about far field effects, and I think that there has been substantial scientific advance on just how... Um, how far some of those far field effects are going. That's been an area of, of, of advancement. So we have more of an idea of how big a buffer zone you would need from that sort of research. I think there are some aspects of that which are still unknown, but we certainly are understanding that, that more. Where we remain, um, in my view, more ignorant is the nature of the diversity of the seafloor ecosystem. But, but the activity on, on, on that last one about cross-contamination, is that something that's... Well, in fact, in fact the, the areas... Uh, of particular environmental interests that have been defined so far actually do include already that buffer zone. They, right. They've been designed taking into account the need for the buffer zone that you describe. I do agree that whether or not that is a correct assessment is still under evaluation. Um, so so uh, your yeah. other question was, sorry. Well, I don't. Yeah, uh, well, I'm thinking. Uh, can I, uh, Mr. Williams, try to respond to those those sort of set of points about whether the set aside and the impact of areas of particular environmental interest, you know, will work, and what else can be done to protect the environment? For the uh, the set aside areas, the areas of particular environmental interest, um, it, it's important that those do work uh, for us as contractors as well as for the regulator. Um, we, we spent some time on our second research cruise in one of those set-aside areas um, and actually a big focus of our efforts at the moment is understanding population connectivity. So is my rare species that I find in my mining area, is that rare in my mining area only? Is it endemic or does it occur quite widespread across the clarine Clifton zone? And that's a big focus of our research. Uh, because clearly uh, we, we want to avoid uh, impacting endemic species. Um, I'll just add that even within our, m our mining uh, contract area, um, we, uh, we will define an impact zone. So that will be the zone which will be impacted both by the, the actual collection of the nodules itself and also the, the further field effects, the plume. And we will also be identifying uh, representative areas so those that very closely match the geophysical characteristics and the biological communities that are within our contract area that we will then set aside and preserve for effectively to provide a scientific control but also a potential source of recolonization once the mining is complete. So uh, as well as those well-publicised set-aside areas, the 1.44, 1.6 million square kilometres that Secretary General referenced, there will be within the mining areas additional set-aside areas. In terms of mitigations, um, Professor Henderson's absolutely right. In terms of the areas where the nodules are going to be collected, those nodules are themselves a habitat. There are uh, species that live on those, uh, and those species will be impacted clearly by the removal of that habitat. Uh, we, we have some indications as to how that goes. Uh, there was a, a German experiment called DISCOL, uh, uh, which uh, re returned to a test site 30 years on and looked at the recolonization, and it was a mixed picture, and there are long-term impacts clearly from that. 
In terms of the plume, we have, a, we have an increasingly good idea as to how that plume um, behaves on the seafloor. There have been experiments for more than four decades on that, uh, and we're, we're seeing not just uh, desktop and modelling studies, but observational studies of that. There are more experiments planned for next year. And uh, I think we can be very confident that the buffer zone that the Secretary General referenced, the 100 kilometres, is more than adequate to protect the, the set-aside areas from any far-field effects. So, can I just clarify, the German um, thing, was that geared et al, where you looked at, um, they looked at some tracks that had been laid out in 1989 and found um, that impacts could cause extinctions and population That's decline. correct, yes. Yeah. So, when you say mixed picture, it's... Yeah. 